Hi, I'm Sharon Angus. I'd like to introduce uh, Grant Howie over there. I look after marketing. Stand up, Grant. Stand up, Grant. Grant looks after sales, so make sure you know that face. All those questions I got last year on price, could you direct them at him this year? <laughs> Uh, I'd also, um, just if you don't know, Dean Hamilton, our new Chief Executive, and uh, you're welcome to have a chat to him at any time during the conference. So what I'm going to talk today is about the fact that there is a repertoire set of what you've got to do in premium value products. So what we have, this is our premier selection range, and it does include Savena, Venison, Angus, Reserve, Salia, which is a joint partnership with Alpine Origin Merino, and Hereford. We've done a lot of work in how we actually brand Savena. You know, people can copy you. So we now have, uh, we've, we've got trademarked pasteurised, and we're looking at how we bring the brands together. So plate to pasture. For us, it's all about the strategy of plate to pasture. And that goes across with what we're doing with venison as well. So I want to talk to you today about what we're doing everywhere. Yes, we're part of the lamb company as well, but we're doing a lot of work in the States and we've been developing what we wanted to do in the last year. In Europe, as we heard before, it's about three seasons, so we're already thinking about what the next season will be. And it's about giving them a new edge for their menu, as you heard. And it's very exciting what we're doing there, but it's very exciting what we're also doing in Asia and the research that we've done to actually look at what we can do with venison and other against all those high proteins. And New Zealand, which is a bit of our hero. Uh, you know, talk about getting a 300 tonne in for the industry in summer. We've just, over the last few years, managed to get 80 tonne of chilled just in our consumer retail business, let alone the extra 50 tonne that we're getting through the Hareka business, which is chilled product. So we've done a lot of research in our value-added markets. So, you know, to get an understanding, what we do is we research all our proteins. This is research we've done in China. And the values for our brand, or what we stand for, needs to stand for across all of that premier selection range. Our values are about natural, and that means a natural lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, all the trends we're seeing globally, and a natural product which is really important, and those values stand across all our categories. Skill and expertise, we talk about the chain of care. We are talking about the farmers. We've got a lot of connection now. We're on websites in China that we're actually doing individual farms, and you can see their stories. But it's right through the value chain. We want to talk about the skill and craft that's gone into the industry, from the farmer to the processor to what we're doing with the product and the care that we've given that product to the consumer. The third one is less is more, and I think we all know with venison that if you actually have got such a beautiful, fine textured product and it's so low in fat, so that's about talking to consumers and understanding their lifestyles, understanding that they've got a very different lifestyle. We're looking for a smaller family size, as people with an ageing population, they want a small pack of venison. And it can go further in these modern lifestyles that we've got. The fifth is respect. And that's about having respect in every country that you go into, that you understand their culture, respect for the animal, and respect for people. So they're the values of Silver Fern Farms brand. Now, our essence is all about creating an eating experience for everyone to share. So that's the essence of the brand, and we do it with all the varieties. So that's what we stand for. We researched our values, and we've done it in quite a few countries. I'm just giving you an example of China. Up the top, you can see how we researched the values. Source and natural is incredibly important to them, and natural product, and the source of where it's coming from. If you're actually talking to the Middle East, process becomes more important. So it's how you implement your brand in these different markets and what it means to those people. Our target is premium meat buyers. Now what we do is find segments that are big enough to target your brand with. 
So we're targeting, um, and we've gone right down to the type of people that, or, this, or their lifestyles, and who we're targeting. So, for example, the target that we've identified that's big enough to get a big enough volume through is what we would call quality seekers. So they're looking for natural, good quality product. Food snobs. Um, if you are going to be talking about venison, then you're going to be talking about it on your menu. And we're also talking about entertainers. So to give you an example how we've researched the size of that segment, in New Zealand that comes to 600,000 people. So everything we do in our marketing is targeted at what those consumers want to know about. If you talk around the world of what's important to a, a premium consumer, the first thing that comes up is food safety. Now that comes across, they've got to trust a brand. In China, food safety means don't have a contaminated product. In the Middle East, food safety means it's really hot, it's 45 degrees, I need to make sure it gets through the value chain and it is protected all the way through. You'll see there that the most, and this is actually talking to consumers, we've done a lot of research last year, the most important thing for these people when they're buying, a, this is protein, premium protein buyers, we don't research the mass market because we research our target that we've already identified. The second most important thing is the country of origin. Now that means New Zealand. We have a huge competitive advantage with New Zealand and we just haven't done enough. You know, in China, they don't, you know, they're even struggling to know the difference between Australia and New Zealand. So we've got to make New Zealand really key to what our difference is. So we have a fresh new look. I mean, you've got to keep innovating if you're actually talking about this consumer because they're a very highly intelligent, smart consumer. So you need to innovate. So in about a month's time, we have a new look for retail venison coming out, which is really exciting. And it's much more targeted to that foodie snob, because we know what they want. And it is, I was really interested in talking to Glenn last, uh, this morning. I found it fascinating hearing about the old marketing and, and things that, gosh, in, the, in Europe do we talk about, be careful not to talk about game, and in the States they don't want to know about game, and we, we started going with a mild flavour. What we've identified with our consumer is that you do need a distinct flavour, and it's about a lean and delicate flavour. And of course we're conscious of health, but in their lifestyles, health is about health and well-being. It's about a holistic approach to health. And we've, we've managed to get, which is a real coup, the double heart tick. Uh, this is new, just coming out, no other brand's got it. And it's about the fact with the health tick, you used to be able to um, look at it and then you'd wonder, why on earth is the health tick on things like chicken nuggets? And now I came to lose faith myself. And we've researched it's a habitual thing that they know a product's healthy. So now the double health tick means it's in, ca in categories that should be healthy. And if you're talking about something like chicken nuggets, it will just be one tick. So it's a whole new evolution, and it's a great thing for venison. If you research, consumers just pick up that product if they've got a health tick on it. So that's launching in a month's time in New Zealand. I love this. This is a comment that was uh, in research we did last year, and this is quantitative research. So we talk to our consumers all the time. If I knew venison tasted like this, I would have brought it before. This is delicious, so subtle, not gamey, and so soft. If we can get that product in consumers' mouths, and we have a three-time rule, of we've got them for life and they really, really love that mild, beautiful venison taste. So we've done a lot of research, that's in our retail, which we're launching in a month's time. We've also done a lot of research in our food service and looked at where there's gaps in the market around the world and talked to consumers around the world of what they're looking for. Remember, we're only targeting premium protein buyers. And we believe there's a huge gap for a much more New Zealand orientated brand, much more modern, you know, there's still a, a big place for five-star restaurants, but people's consumption are changing at restaurants. They want, you know, a venison burger is actually seen as elite, and we can get a high price for a venison burger. So we've got to be really careful that we stay relevant to that consumer's lifestyle. We don't just focus on what was in the past. So we're making our brand much more relevant. We've done what we think is, is important. We've researched it in Europe and in um, America. 
And they're looking for an agile brand, a much more agile, flexible, and definitely what was talked about before when we heard Hanos talking about, these chefs want a new edge for their menu. They want something different. And that's why we've got the opportunity with our other brands that we get in there with beef, and then we say, hey, we've got this exciting product that is venison. Fresher, vital, more edgy. And we need to be talking about New Zealand farm-raised venison. So to give you a feel of sort of what we're, we're doing, is it is plate to pasta, so we're talking about the product first, because that's our strategy, talk about what's relevant to them, and then we're also very highly talking about the pasture. Uh, one of the things that we've researched with chefs is the biggest trend they're looking for is high quality product that is consistently good every time, and that's the essence of our brand, that we will deliver and take away that anxiety that you won't get a bad product ever. So uh, that's a quote from a chef over there that's saying that um, cooking is challenging enough to not have to worry about the quality of the product it makes my job easier. I'm very glad that Silver Fern Farms has an extensive product range. So what we need to, New Zealand's tiny, venison's even tinier, and it's so not known around the world. I did awareness in China and there's very, very little awareness. If we're going to educate consumers around the world, we need to be able to get into that consumer set. You will not get chefs turning up just to taste venison. You know, you'll get them in certain things that you do, but what we've found, if you've got a repertoire set and you get them to come and taste our grass-fed beef and you come and taste our venison as well, you're more likely to get a really good turnout. So just to give you a feel of what we're doing, it's about a new taste and, and new possibilities for your menu. It's a fresh edge for your menu, which is what we did with Lawton, and it worked incredibly well. It's giving somebody something really exciting. It's about pasture-raised freshness, and not showing the animals that, you know, is the difference between game and farm. It's actually showing how we farm, and a natural vitality of the product. They like talking about the product. So a finest expression of venison guaranteed is how we're doing and what we're going to be repositioning our food service range to. So this is consumption per capita. I'm on to New Zealand now, and I'm going to give you a little bit of each country of what we're doing. We research and quantify how we get consumption per capita up, and this is what's really important when you're talking about venison. It's all very well talking. We need to know what they're eating. So in this research, you can see, you know, they eat lamb basically either once a week or every two weeks. In beef, they definitely eat it once a week. We divide, the, we divide this research into what's a regular Silver Fern Farms buyer, what's an occasional buyer, and people that don't buy Silver Fern Farms. So what we're trying to do is get consumption away from only occasionally with venison to once a month and then to once a fortnight. You can see there the bottom two lines are Silver Fern Farms occasional and uh, regular buyers we have 70% of them buying venison. So they trust our lamb, they trust our beef, and now they're really beginning to trust venison. Whereas the rest of the market that don't buy silver fern farms buy it far less frequently. And you can see if you go into every two weeks or once a week, you know, we're actually getting our buyers to buy it 10% of the time once a week now. So we've grown over the years and you know, we're up to two and a half million just in retail of what we're doing with our marketing of chilled product in New Zealand in the retail market. Very key market for us. And yes, we do need to, if you go into a sea of a butchery and we talk to people and a lot of high protein consumers, which are the ones we're targeting, remember, you know, uh, the, our, our consumer earns over 100,000. We're not targeting the mass. And so when you still go into a supermarket, you're going to see a lot of polystyrene and you're going to see a lot of um, glad wrap. You still don't see brands. So yes, we had venison with the venison category, we had beef with the beef category, and we had lamb with the lamb category. But we've talked to PEL, and PEL, PEL have said to us, we think your brand has got a lot more strength, why don't we brand block? I mean, this is a huge coup for us. So Grant's managed to get where in June, July, August, they're doing a, a huge trial, all 
PEL stores, and that's the major coup for us, are going to change all their merchandising and we're going to brand block and we're going to have lamb, beef and venison together so we can get the benefit of seeing the brand in the three categories. And you can see there, that's our point of sale. That's our venison one, just so you don't think that we don't concentrate on venison. Uh, I didn't orchestrate that. Uh, we're going to be putting up these, these point of sale that's lean and delicate flavour every time and showing that double heart cut, showing that it's for your lifestyle because you can cook it in 20 minutes. You don't have to spend a lot of time slow cooking it. So that's all the things that we're going to educate the consumer about. This is what they say to us about our brand. And what I like about Silverphone Farms... And what I like about Silverphone Farms meat is because it is tasty, delicious, and there's no waste. It's good quality every time I buy it. Tasty and fresh. It's so, so easy. You don't have to do anything special with this meat. Easy, really easy meal. I love the variety, I love the cuts, I love the presentation actually, I really, I love how it's presented. It's sort of things of quality, it's not in a horrible little styrofoam container with some glad wrap, it, it looks like you're buying a quality product. How you present your, your goods are to me vitally important to your credibility and, and, um, and if you have crappy packaging, I often think it must be very good inside. When you eat it and you cook it, you know that you've bought a quality product, so the, the, what you're seeing, the brand, matches the product which is always nice. When you buy it you always know it's going to be good and that's the reason we usually get it. Sometimes you buy a sort of generic steak you might go is it going to be tough, is it going to be gristly but never that with silver fern, never. Emotive essence always. but you can't actually get what your values mean until you can get your consumer, that question was just what do you think of silver fern farms and the point that that lady made, it's consistent every time, that's our essence. And it won't let you down. So we go to the great lengths so you don't have to. And there's a lot of learning that we've got to do about venison that they don't want to be let down. They don't want to take the rest. It's, it's $45, $50 a kilo for our products. So a consumer in a modern lifestyle doesn't want to take a risk on a product that is not guaranteed success for their anxiety of cooking, for their child or for their husband. The other thing that we're doing is a lot of social media. I mean, we do take the benefits of our whole range and what we've got with the brand values for Silver Fern Farms, but we're trying to take a much bigger message that will go across the three categories now as we get established in the market. So these are banners that go onto um, websites, and, and it's almost called stalking. We look at our consumers, and I did laugh when Dean rang me on a, uh, or texted me on a Sunday morning and sort of said, I'm on the Herald and all of a sudden your video, your videos come up or your banners come up. And I said, that's because we know you read the Herald. We are doing incredibly targeted marketing. For me, I love shoes. My video will come up when I'm looking at a Bo Coops website. So we know what these females are looking at. We know what their lifestyle is. We're even doing something as scary as Vic Park, which is the best supermarket in New Zealand that if they're in the vicinity on a smartphone near to Vic Park, they will get a Silver Fern Farms video and remind them when they go in to buy our product. So, you know, that's how clever marketing's getting. And we've got to do that all around the world. So what we're doing, this will be a banner. The first banner will come up. The, first, the, the flag doesn't represent a country. It stands for the best farmers, raising the best animals in the world. And then we have our three products. And that'll be the last banner it lands on. And we're going to use these internationally in markets as well, because it's about New Zealand. Uh, and of course, we know a lot that they don't want hormones and everything else that we've talked about. This banner comes up, and we've researched them since they've been live and talked to the consumers, and they really get it. Lush green grass is the first banner. The second banner that comes up, lush green grass, clean air. Lush green grass, clean air, fresh water. These are our additives. And then the brand comes up. Um, I'm also going to show you a A ditty. silver fern farm's roast is made from a single piece of muscle. That means it cooks evenly throughout and is consistently tender. Which means no one's fighting over the best bits because it's all good. Yeah, and um, we put that on Facebook just for a little competition. And we're doing that with, obviously that applies to venison as well, that it's a one single muscle. That was the key thing of people, what people launched with. So we put that on Facebook, got 300 comments just for putting up for a quick... Uh, view and they sort of said, oh, we laughed because our kids um, fight over the first bit. I really get that. Now, I understand why it's so easy to cook. And, you know, this, this is another wee ditty, but we just, we've launched this for six weeks and we've had 700,000 views of our video 
on Facebook with had 441,000 views of our videos on YouTube. This is what we've got to be doing in our industry. Get up with the play, get on this social media. We're doing very little above the line. This is one about grass-fed, which applies to all three categories. At Silverfern Farms, all our animals are grass-fed. Free farm the New Zealand way, eating just the good old-fashioned green stuff. This gives our meat a deliciously distinctive flavour. It also saves us from doing the lawns. They're pretty big lawns. So a little bit of our humour, a little bit of our farm. I was talking to Clive last night and he challenged me about our farmer right five years ago. Um, but now, like, he really appeals. But we're doing it in a much different way. We're not doing it in TV ads the same. And, of course, we have the Premier Selection Awards, which has to be all over categories where people wouldn't just enter for venison. And Reserve has won the last two years, but we're mixing it up this year. We're actually going to have a winner for venison and a winner for beef and a winner for lamb. So it will mean that we get much more attention to the categories right across the range. Uh, very, very exciting. We're launching in Singapore this week with our retail venison packs. Uh, they love it. We wouldn't have got it in without the lamb, so they're launching lamb and venison together, and we're trialling it there, and we're going to launch in Hong Kong. So very exciting things. Yes, it's taken time to build the brand, but we're now getting really good traction. And USA, really exciting things happening here too. Uh, we're obviously part of the lamb company. We've also got a great partner in Marks that we started off with grass-fed beef, and we're going direct to consumer with Fresh Direct with little Savannah packs that are portion packs. So this is all starting this new season, so very exciting. And this is what I'm meaning about a branded portfolio. Marks is, like Hanos, fantastic distributor. Key success factor, just like what we heard before, if you don't have the right distributors, and we've been working on it for about four years now, then it just won't work. You have to have a premium distributor, and you have to um, go about what they're trying to do as a repertoire set of what they're selling to that chef. So we started a few years ago with Marks, and we've had great success with grass-fed beef. Uh, we're now having great success with Reserve. Celia, they're just launching Celia, and they're very keen to make Savena a much more relevant type of product in the States. So not aiming quite at that five star, they're aiming at a much more mainstream calf that is quite expensive, and we can certainly get the premium. This is the type of marketing that Marks does with us. They've developed recipes just for Savena for the American market. They've also developed lots of Celere, which is our joint partnership with um, New Zealand Merino. And we're getting great traction on that. Now, we've had Celere for four years, so it is very much about getting, doing the hard yards and getting it recognised with those chefs. Fresh Direct, you can see there, that's the Savannah of Silverfern Farms. It's going to be labelled on a portion pack and sold direct to little food service outlets. So E-commerce is becoming huge. This is what Lawton is doing as well. They're selling direct as well online. So we can see the channels merging and changing as we look around the world. And of course, the trial that we did with Lawton about Savannah in the summer, uh, you know, it, it, it is... Uh, only starting, and we have to educate the chefs that they could have this product. But how we marketed it over there was about a fresher taste for you in summer, a new edge for your menu, and a pasture-raised summer specialty. We did a website straight away so that we had the tablets there, and Brownie, wherever he is, did a fantastic job of giving us all the recipes, and then we reshot them all. And we put them online and we actually have to teach these chefs. So we had all the recipes on tablets there when we had the chef days. And we've also started a web that actually gives the messages straight to them so they can straighten and we translated it to Dutch. This is some of the comments that they came back with. The different way of cooking, they've got to learn it must eat it rare, which is what we've been trying to tell them for a long time. Don't slow cook this gorgeous product. Really something nice for something for the summer season. Really different. A fine, nice meat. It's about that delicate flavour that we get. And I love this. It's the angel on the tongue, as we say in Dutch. So I sort of will leave you with that. 
we did get great turnouts. Um, you know, it's going to be a long slog. You can see how we gave sample products of the packs. We showed them how to cook it. And this is another one. Uh, the marketing had table cards. We had lots of education for the waitress to actually be able to talk about it. We had tablets with all the ways to cook it. And we've got an article coming out in PR as well. Uh, so thank you very much. I think that gives you a little bit of insights to sort of what we're doing and how we're looking at across our markets.